of the will of God is a faith practice that carries great weight in the spirit. Warfare and intercession. Warfare and intercession. That God will find a man who will stand in the gap. Are we together? He said, I sought for a man. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. I sought for a man. God is the one who is saying, I sought for a man. That should be Ezekiel 22 or so. Please find it for us. I sought for a man. Verse 30, thank you. Among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Listen, I have taught you about prayer here. And let me remind you that the reason why prayer and intercession and warfare is very important is because man will always participate with God for divine programs to find expression on earth. Did you get that? Man, for the fact that God gave man the will, the ability to choose, and God made man a steward over the earth, God will always require participation and cooperation from man for any divine program to find expression. That means if men do not agree with God in prayer, it can abort the manifestation of his will or abort the timing of that manifestation. Don't forget this. These are the two major consequences of prayerlessness as far as God's program is concerned. It can abort the manifestation of God's program or it can abort the timing of that manifestation. That means God can desire that your family be liberated in January. And because there's no intercessor, there's nobody with sufficient spiritual intelligence who can appropriate the victory of Christ over curses, yokes, territorial powers, and take them at bay to allow a free flow of God's program. You can find out that something that was ordained by God to happen in 2021, it will end up happening in 2032. Something that was supposed to happen in 1990 will end up happening in 2012. And you'll be wondering why that prolonged thing because it is the intensity of intercession standing in the place of prayer to agree with God. I've taught you here that Anna the prophetess, she was one of the major intercessors that midwived the safe arrival of Jesus. That Jesus as the son of the living God, he did not just come because God wanted him to come. She stood there, having known the timing by prophecy. She began to engage for about 60 years. You know what it means to be an intercessor for 60 years? 60 years. Give us 27. Uh, 30, 37. She was a widow of about four score and four years. That's 84 years. And right from 20 years, when her husband died, she died. Dedicated or 24 there about. She dedicated the remaining part of her life. The Bible says she departed not from the temple, but she served with fastings and prayers night and day. Verse 38. And she coming in, in that instant, gave thanks likewise to the Lord and spake of him to all of them that looked forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So there was a prophetic word that redemption was going to come for the people of God. But she knew that the Messiah would come. How it would happen, she did not know. She took that responsibility. Now that my husband is dead, let me convert my pain to purpose. Let me convert my pain to power. And she invested 60 years of her life praying Jesus down. Hallelujah. It matters that God finds a people. Let me tell you the truth. Every genuine intercessor is a weighty person in the spirit. Provided it is from the purity of heart, remember? And with love for God, his program, and his people. That means 
the time that you are taking now to invest in prayer over your family, invest over your unsaved siblings, invest over the program of God, invest over koinonia. Do you know how many people pray for me and pray for this ministry? You have no idea. Some of you are an active part of it and may God bless you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. When it has to do with praying for God's program, nobody is immune enough to not need prayer. He said, brethren, pray for us. I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the ministry of warfare with understanding and prophetic intercession is a kingdom activity that carries great weight in the spirit. Who is learning now? When you see someone say, I am an intercessor in your mind, don't think, oh, because you are not a civil servant, because you are not a business mogul, you are such a failure in life, you'll be making a mistake. Except that person's heart is not pure and except the person is not doing it by love, there is an earthly reward that will come to that person. What money can buy and what money cannot buy. God can covenant with that person to his third and fourth generation to see that there will always be somebody who rises, are we together, to enjoy the benefits of that intercession. Because an intercessor has chosen to look beyond himself. This is what makes intercession powerful. Intercession is beyond just being prayerful. You can be prayerful for yourself, fasting for yourself, fasting for your needs. But once you consider your needs of lesser value and you focus on God's program and you begin to dissipate consistent energy praying, let me tell you, you carry great weight in the spirit. And by this prayer, I'm praying for someone. Perhaps there is an anointing, a mantle of an intercessor, but you've not been utilizing it because life has made you look like you don't want to be foolish, a fanatic, you've not, you don't want to be foolish, uh, you want to make sense and make money and all of that and there's a place for that. Let me tell you the truth. If God has called you to the ministry of intercession, there is always bread at the place of purpose. There is always bread at the place of purpose. The reason why many people do not get their allocation is that their heart is not right. There is always bread at the place of purpose. Listen to what I'm telling you. Always there is bread. If God tells you to go to Brook Cherith, as mysterious as that instruction is, there will be a raven bringing you meat and bringing you bread. There will be water by the brook. And when it dries up and you are still with a pure heart and his insincere love, you will hear him again and he will send you to Zarephath where you will meet a woman who will hold you there. It is impossible for God to call people and they are walking in keeping with the blueprints he's given them with sincerity of heart and he leaves them as beggars. It's a lie. Every time you see that anomaly, I submit to you, there has been a compromise on hearing patterns or obedience. Hallelujah. There is always bread at the place of purpose. So God has called you to be an intercessor. Don't feel you will be left out. Don't feel you will be cheated. By the time I give myself to intercession, who is going to pay my children's school fees? The first thing is verify whether it's just passion or it's a mandate. If it is the God of heaven that I know, that I've served all my life, I can tell you sincerely, he will not leave you to beg. It's because most people don't know God. And we have allowed, with all due respect, the speakings of men to pollute our perception about God. We have turned God into an irresponsible person. He looks to us like an irresponsible person because we've read him from the lens of intellect. So he looks like he's just a man who wants to use us and whatever happens in our life is our business. That is not the God we preach. The God we preach is benevolent, purposeful, visionary, loving, and very thoughtful. People came for a crusade, and when they were hungry, is that not in your Bible? He said, no, don't let these people go like this. They had houses. Not all of them were poor, but his extent of fatherhood and benevolence. He said, no, if I allowed this go, I would not be given the good image of my father. Tell them to sit down. Let them eat. If God can feed the members who came for his conference, how about those who serve him?
Do you believe what I'm saying? Yeah. Away with that talk that, okay, I will serve God and beg for bread. Truly, you can serve God and beg for bread. Oh, Many are serving him and they are begging for bread. I am telling you, it is either they have not embraced the whole counsel of God or they have not been mentored to understand how their daily bread comes. Refer to my teaching, our daily bread. There is an allocation for the saints in righteousness. If and when you know how God works, the first weighty activity of men that carries weight in the spirit and commands great rewards is the ministry of warfare and intercession. Can we go to number two? Number two. Means it's finished. Yes, we are changed.